Okay, here we go. Okay. Welcome, sex cell development in males and females. Okay. Sex cell development, males, females. Okay. Sex cell development, when I go from diploid to haploid, sperm cells, etc. What's that called? They're stunned. What's it called? The development of sperm and egg. Yeah. Development of the sperm and the ovum. Meiosis. Very good. Meiosis. Okay? Meiosis. Okay, you have meiosis. Where does meiosis occur in the male? It's right in your book, guys. Come on. You can do this. You can do this. You're right there. The book's over there. In the testes. Okay? How do you spell testes? T-E-S? The testes? What is that? Is that plural? What's the singular testy called? Testes. How do you spell it? Testicles. Is this a singular? Testicles. Testicles. Excuse me. Testicle. Testicle. Testicle and males have two testicles. Yes. Okay? And where are the testicles? Where are they contained in? So you have two testicles. And they're contained in the scrotum. Why are they on the outside? Why are they in the scrotum? Why are they there? It comes in very, it's very inconvenient relative to athletics. Very, can you imagine the football players and baseball players? It's really difficult. You have to wear certain things in order to protect your testicles. In sports, they're on the outside of the body. Why? What is? I know. Why are they on the outside of the body? Women stuff is on the inside. Why are men on the outside of the body? Because sperm is very sensitive to pH. Well, pH. Yes, they're very sensitive to pH. But they're very sensitive to the development of the sperm. Heat. You gotta. You know, they, they they don't like a lot of heat. They like things. They like they like it cool. Okay. So. Is important to be on the outside. Yes. Understood? Okay. So they're in, they're in the scrotum. Okay. Now, where what actually produces the sperm? It's it produced in the testicles. In what kind of cells? Sex cells. Sex cells. Is that what they're called? It says right there. What does it say? What was it called? What is it? Yeah. Well, right. They're in. They're in. They're in. Seminifer. How do you spell that? Seminiferous. And then T U. Tubules. T U B. T U B U. L O E S. You learn how to spell in science. Okay? Very important, especially when your teacher is slightly dyslexic and has a hard time writing on the board. Okay. You know why I spell cats? It's easier. It's easier to start in the middle. I know. When the words get really big, it's hard. Yeah. But when somebody tells me what goes next, it's easier. Okay? Now. So they're made, they're in seminiferous tubules, correct? Anything else you want to tell me about, about the production? What is a what does a sperm look like? Yeah. Little guy, yeah. yeah like, little like, tail. What's that little tail called? Flagellum. How do you spell flagellum? I, I didn't ask you. How fast you can spell it. <laughs> flagellum. And what does the flagellum do? 
allows it to move on its own. Yeah, it allows it to move on its own. Yeah, now look, this is important. All right, here is, I'm terrible at art, my, my apologies. No problem. Okay, here is, Is that right? That's not even close. Is that okay? So here's the vaginal area, okay, the birth canal, the vagina. The penis goes in here. You have the ejaculate that goes through this narrow opening into the uterus. It has to go up the uterus. It has to go through the fallopian tubes. We'll talk about the women's anatomy in a minute. And fertilization occurs maybe you're out there if you're lucky. Correct? Yes. So it needs something to make it move. Understood? So it starts there and it has to end up there or there. Okay? So and considering a sperm is about one one hundred thousand the size of an egg, it's no easy trip. It's no easy trip. It's a long trip. Yeah, it's a long trip. Consider, consider how big a car is. You multiply the car in size, the size of a sperm. What's that, what's that distance like? It's very far. Very far. And it's a limited amount of fuel. One tank of gas is all you get. You've got to get there and then have the energy to penetrate the egg and do the fertilization. So you need healthy sperm. Clear? Okay. So what else do we have? Give me some more information, guys. You're falling apart. What else? What else we got? Come on, give me some stuff. Remember, you have to read the book. How do you read a book? Okay. How do you read the book? Look at all these pictures. These are great pictures. Let me show you these pictures. Okay, if I can. My shoulder is hurting today. Okay. Here. It says, Did you know if you twi untwisted a seminiferous tubule, it would measure approximately 70 centimeters in length? Isn't that amazing? No joke. Okay? So, I want you to, you're going to have to know the anatomy of this thing. Do you see the bas deferens in the upper part? Okay? The bas deferens. This is the bas deferens here that transports the sperm. Okay? The bas deferens that is there. That's where uh, things are cut for male, uh, the male. Uh, a, co a contraceptive technique so the, that the sperm never reaches uh, the penis for delivery so you don't have any sperm in the ejaculate. The ejaculate is mainly produced where? The ejaculate. I'm not talking about the sperm. The sperm is in the ejaculate. Where does the ejaculate come from? Mainly. The prostate. What does it say about the prostate? What does it say? Anything about the prostate? So you have the vas deferens. Here's the here's the testy. This tube here is the vas deferens, and when you snip that, the Sperm can't go to the urethra, okay, or the the prostate or anywhere. It can't enter into the ejaculate. Okay, so we have as the sperm cell develop, as sperm cells develop from the immature, shapeless form, they begin to grow a flagellum and reduce the amount of cytoplasm inside the cell. As the sperm matures, they move slowly into the epididymis, an organ that lies near the testes. 
where they complete their development. Okay? You see the epididymis? You see that little part of the gland? The epididymis is actually here. That's the epididymis. It's literally on top of the testing. Okay? So sperm are not built to last. They have one job and one job only. And what's that job? To reach the egg, penetrate the egg, deliver the genetic material, and that's it. Understood? That's it. Those not released for reproduction die within a few days and are replaced by newer cells and are in, and scavenging white blood cells scour the epididymis, removing older sperm and those that have died. So if they're not used, they're discarded. And the white blood cell scavenges the epididymis. The epididymis is where the, the sperm goes to get ready for delivery. Okay? Fertilization in mammals, fertilization is internal. Each egg is fertilized by one sperm. Two sperm can't, get, can't do it. Once it's fertilized, it starts to rapidly develop into what? Starts with a Z and ends with goat. Zygote. Zygote. Excellent. Uh, the sperm uses its store of chemicals to enter the egg, but the egg permits only the head to enter. The body remains outside. That's very important. People think that the sperm completely goes into the egg and it really just kind of nuzzles to the egg, gets in there a little bit, and then delivers, delivers the information. As soon as one sperm has entered, the egg puts up a barrier that other sperm cannot break through. Once inside the egg, the sperm's nucleus emerges with the nucleus of the egg. In humans, the fertilized egg has how many chromosomes? 46. 46 divided by 2? 23. The amount of chromosome in each haploid sperm and egg cell? 23. Hormones and male sex production. Excuse me. Alright. Um, what time? What time is it? How much time do we have? Time is up? Yeah. All right, can I read this quickly? I, I want to show you what to pull out of this, okay? I, I want to, the next few videos to teach you how to actually read a book, a science book. It says, up until week seven following fertilization, human male and female embryos are identical in, in appearance. Up until week seven following fertilization, Human male and female embryos are identical in appearance. Can't tell. So, if you're a parent, what do you have to do? You have to wait what? Longer than seven weeks in order to find the sex of the child. Then, a chemical messenger, a hormone, is sent from the brain to stimulate the development of the sexual structures. After birth, the reproductive organs of both male and females produce low levels of sex hormones. These sex hormones continue to influence the development of male and female characteristics. However, reproductive organs are not capable of producing mature sex cells until puberty. So puberty, we're kind of a little bit all over the place here. But let me just read that just for a moment, because you're, I know what would confuse me if you were reading that. It says, it says, up until seven, week seven following fertilization, human male and female embryos are identical in appearance. Then a chemical messenger, a hormone, is sent from the brain to stimulate the development of sexual structures. Then it's talking about it after birth. That was really a very quick development, wasn't it? So, these sex hormones continue to influence the development of the male and female characteristics. However, reproductive organs are not capable of producing mature sex cells until puberty. 
So now we're up to puberty. So just hang with me just for a minute, okay? It says puberty is a period of rapid growth and sexual maturity. You're kind of out of it now, you guys, but you're still very young in terms of its development. You're still developing, although you may not seem like you are in some ways, but you are still rapidly developing. So it says it usually takes place in humans between 9 and 15. Uh, 15 is generally a limit, but that doesn't mean that the sexual development doesn't continue for a little bit while, a little while after puberty. Okay, you reach your maturity. It says during that time, humans display a wide variety of physical changes. You guys know what they are. Two other hormones are important in sperm development, but these hormones are released by the pituitary gland in the brain. Luteinizing hormone, LH. Luteinizing hormone, LH, causes special testes cells to produce testosterone. Follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, act directly on the reproductive cells in the testes, causing them to divide and produce sperm. I'm almost done. FSH also causes the reproductive cells to absorb testosterone. Figure three shows how these hormones interact in feedback systems. Testosterone secretion and, sp and sperm production usually continues for the rest of the male's life. Males over 90 years old have been known to father children. Now, this is my point. Listen carefully. One week from today, I want a poster summarizing male sex development. Understood? The male anatomy, the male sex development. Understood? And I want another poster. Female sex development, female sex structures. Understood? Two posters, one week from today. Got it? Individual. Individually. Understood? You can bring them to class and we'll work on them in class. Okay? Bring the materials with you our next day. We have class first period on Sunday. Clear? Okay? Have a good one.